Chapter 3 First day of school and a new friend. Finally, after a day of arranging boxes and old furniture around to shape your new house into a place you could call home, your next task was going to your new school, located just outside of town. It wasn't that much different than your average schoolhouse, with its freshly painted cherry red structure with small pink hats and horseshoes painted just below the start of the roof and around the borderlands of the whole building. On top was a small bell tower that was gleaming, with a gleaming gold bell hanging from a pole that went through it on a vertical axis. As you neared the schoolhouse and prepared to start the day with some nervousness still lingering inside your mind about how it would turn out, you saw who you assumed to be the teacher stand outside on the porch, welcoming the students as she allowed them to entry and to take their seats. <clears throat> Her mane was a soft pink, with a very light hue of white in it that made it glisten softly and it contrasted nicely with her maroon coat and sparkling green eyes that were just a tad darker than Sweetie Belle's. On her flanks was a cute mark of three blooming flowers with pink petals and smiling faces in the middle over a yellow centre. Just as she was letting the last couple of colts and fillers into the school, you appeared to be the last one and for a moment you could see her looking over you with a welcoming smile and slight curiosity. Oh, you must be Cerulean. Nice to meet you. I've already heard about you from your mother. I'm Miss Cherley, by the way. I'll be teaching you throughout the year, she said in a friendly manner. Nodding back in acknowledgement, you gave back a small wave with a hoof. Nice to meet you too, Miss Cherley. Also, everyone calls me Blaze. You said with a smile before you entered the room where all the other fills and courts were sat. And right away, you could easily pick out the three you met earlier. Scootaloo, Apple Bloom, and Sweetie Belle all of which sat near each other. Scootaloo sat at the back of the room on the far right. Sweetie sat bang in the middle of the room and Apple Bloom sat on the front row on the far right. However, seeing as you are new to the class, Miss Chirley took it upon herself to introduce you to the rest of the class that only consisted of around 10 or so kids, you included. All right, everypony, today we have a new student join us. So please give a warm welcome to Cerulean Blaze. You felt a small blush on your cheeks at the welcome every pony in the room gave you as they applauded with their hooves clattering softly on the surfaces of the desk. After the small introduction, Miss Chirley directed you to the back of the room where she sat you and the only empty desk that was directly next to Scoot Lou's. Taking your seat and getting comfortable, you momentarily waved a hoof to her and she gave one back, a warm smile upon her lips. Moving back to the front of the room and standing beside her desk and grabbing a piece of chalk, Chili trotted over to the large green chalkboard that had a fair amount of old chalk lines across its surface and began writing before turning her back to the class and placing the piece of white chalk aside. Merged into the word literature on the board, she looked back at the class. All right, every pony, let's get today's lesson started, she began, scribbling yet another off thing or two on the board before turning back to face you. I want you all to get your, out your books and turn to page 57. For the first half of the day, we're going to learn about Griffin history. You had a grown or two come from some of the students, obviously less than interested in the topic. You, however, had a small smile on your lips at a mention of Griffin history. At least it was an upside to move into Ponyville. Time went on into the latest hours of the day, and you found yourself actually starting to enjoy lessons in class. Something that you would rarely ever be feeling. The silence of the room with all the students working was only broken by the sound of pencil scribbling on paper and the occasional turn of a page. Beside you, you could see that Scootaloo had long grown bored and fallen asleep in class. Her head planted softly on top of her book and her face was towards you. You thought she looked kind of cute as she let out a soft exhale of hair with every breath she took and her expression looked so peaceful. In a way, you thought she looked a little angelic in that pose. When you, you, when you were about to turn back to your work, the bell at signal break time sounded and it was enough to wake up the sleeping Pegasus as every pony was being dismissed and let outside. However, when Scootaloo and you were about to leave, Chili stopped the two of you for a moment, looking at Scootaloo who had a confused but somewhat known look in her eyes. I need you to stay behind Scootaloo. I saw you sleeping again through class. She turned to you, her look softening momentarily. You can go, Blaze. This will only take a moment or two. Softly, you looked to Scootaloo and she said for you to leave and that she'd be fine. Slowly but reluctantly, you left the little two alone and wandered outside to the playground. You had no idea what that was about, but you could only assume it wasn't the first time Scootaloo had fallen asleep during a lesson that was in session and you couldn't help but have some worry in your heart for your new friend. Just as quickly as you stepped outside, you could see both Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle talking together outside by the playground equipment. 
Not knowing anybody else, you decide to walk over to them and see what they're up to. As they saw you approach, they waved to you and you waved back. The two of them looked behind you momentarily with expectant expressions on their faces. Hey Blaze, where's Scootaloo? Wasn't she with you on your way out? Sweetie asked, a brow half raised. You simply shrugged. Miss Chirley told her to stay behind. I only presumed it was because she fell asleep in class, you explained briefly, adding a soft chuckle from Apple Bloom. Oh, I've heard that one before. It's not like Scootaloo to enjoy literature or anything. She laughed momentarily before pointing a hoop behind her. Oh, here she comes. Coming beside you, Scootaloo joined the group, a slightly saddened look on her face, causing her two friends to cast worried looks. What's up, Scoots? You okay? Spitty asked, touching her to her shoulder, but Scootaloo didn't look up. Miss Chili's upset with me, she said, her tone sounding sorry for herself. She says if I, if I don't pay attention in class, she won't have a choice but to kick me out. She finished with a frown, the new shock in her friends and you. What? Apple Bloom exclaimed in an outburst of shock. Kick you out? Where'd you even go? Scootaloo shrugged. I don't know. I guess it won't even matter anyway. I can't st even stay awake sometimes during twilight time, never mind school. She sighed. I just don't know what I can do. I'm screwed. You couldn't help but feel sympathy for her. That upset look on her face said it all and it hurt your heart to see it. Nudging her hoof with your own, she curiously looked you in the eyes, making her now glistening purple eyes visible to you. Hey Scootaloo, I may not know have known you for that long, but um, if it would help, I'd be more than happy to help you out with your work and all that. You know, if you'd like to, that is. You offered to her and she managed to smile, but still held that doubtful look. Oh, I don't know, Blaze. I think that she already was upset with me to begin with and that she was already giving me too many chances. If Miss Chirley can't help me, then how could you? She raised her brow at you quizzically. You felt a soft blush tinge your cheeks, a bright rosy colour. I was top of my class back where I came from. You admitted, and to your surprise, that gone impressed look out Pegasus. Trust me, Scootaloo. I can help you if you need it. All you gotta do is ask me. You said with a smile, and she smiled back. Surprisingly, and taking you lightly aback, you felt the hooves of Scootaloo wrapping around you and pulling you into a brief hug, showing how grateful she was for your offer. When she let go, you could see that she was too, now blushing, a little brighter than the fires in your own cheeks. Thanks, Blaze. I appreciate it. Really, I do. So, when do we get started? Just stop by my place whenever you have the time, and we'll work from there. You said right before the bell rang again, and you found yourself back in the classroom with the nose deep in the textbook again. You would take a glance towards Scootaloo, seeing that same confused expression from before. With a hoof, she held her head and a heavily confused look on her face as she stared down at the textbook, presumably trying to figure out whatever she was looking at meant. You thought about trying to talk to her or getting her attention so you could help her out, but went against it when you saw Chirley looking over your way from the back of the room with a known expression on her face. Clearly, she has been watching the two of you for a while now. Immediately, you got back to work until the bell rang indicating that today was over. As every pony filed out of the classroom in a hurried manner, you were again the second to last one out, followed by Scootaloo. As you exited the schoolhouse, she called after you. Hey Blaze, wait a minute, she called, causing you to stop with a confused look on your face as you turned her direction, watching her run up to you and skid into a halt just in front of you. You got a minute? You blinked. Oh, um, yeah, sure. What's up? Awkwardly, Scootaloo started pouring on the floor with a hoof, averting her eyes from yours as a somewhat uncomfortable look crossed her features. Um, I was wondering, I was wondering if, uh, you know, when you offered to help me, uh, she stopped herself, clearly looking incredibly uneasy at what she was going to ask. From her looks alone, you guessed that she was never or rarely asked for help with any form of work, especially from a cult in particular that made it all the more impossible for her to ask such a simple thing. Uh, Scootaloo... Yeah, sure. I don't mind if you want to come with me and study at my place. You finished her own sentence for her, causing her to blush softly. You suppressed a laugh. Wow, really? She asked, clearly surprised. You do that? You nodded. Of course. Oh, come on. I'll walk you over to my place. At that, her blush seemed to deepen, but you simply thought nothing of it. 
The majority of the walk to your house was spent in complete and utter silence that was only broken by the breathing of the two of you and the sounds of the birds that sang in the trees above and around you. All the while, Scootaloo kept her head down and her blush still lingered there, fading a bit. You have only known her for roughly a day and already things in your mind started to get a little awkward. Oddly, she kept blushing when she was around you, which you've kind of felt weird, but you didn't really think nothing of it at the time it happened. Your train of thought ended as you came to be standing in front of your own house. It wasn't anything different or special than the other traditional Ponyville houses around town, but the main structure itself was designed to house four, allowing enough space that was more than enough for just you and your mother. Times from long ago made you heavily miss the point in your life when you used to have a family of three under one roof. With one down from that number, it only left you and your mother to spill the space with the rest of the pure emptiness and a memory of who wasn't there anymore. The roof of the house was made from typical hay and wood materials that was on most other houses in town, and the bodywork matched with the white and brown wood panelling that reinforced it to stand and tall and straight. Other than when you got here, the newest addition to the household was your mailbox, standing proudly out front. It was an average sized metallic blue painted box with a custom yellow thunderbolt mark attached to the side. Looking to Scootaloo, you motion with a hoof to her to follow you inside your house, and once you're both inside, you close the door behind you. Seeing your house for the first time, Scootaloo took in her surroundings, seemingly quite amazed by the decoration and cleanliness of the room. All the walls were painted in a soft blue colour, nearly matching the light blue in your mane, and the ceilings were a perfect white. With no other movement audible but yours and Scootaloo's own hooves, you realise that you were the only ones home. On walls, pictures were hung, displaying all the new memories of your life as you grew up. Despite all the others, you couldn't help but notice Scootaloo look over to one in particular. A large frame photo covered by glass that was hung on the far wall of the room that was located next to the fireplace at the end. It displayed three family members. You and your mother, and a proudly smiling stallion with a coat as white as yours and a blue mane and tail with eyes that match. She looked as though she wanted to say something about it, but wisely kept her mouth shut, not wanting to unintentionally hurt you. The rest of the room was just as tidy as the rest, and only furniture covering the available space was a couple of small couches aligned perfectly at the edges of the, of the dark blue rug in an L formation that sat comfortably in the middle. On the centre of the rug was a small black framed glass coffee table. You led Scootaloo towards the stairs, and the two of you ascended them to the second floor where you showed her to your new room, closing the door behind you with a creak. Unlike your room back at Manhattan, this one was tidier and much cleaner, with the same coating of paint as downstairs. From the left of the entrance of the room stood your bed, with a Wonderbolt bedsheet to dawn it as a covers with a matching pillow that had the Wonderbolt's logo on it. Beside your bed was a small bookcase. Various editions and volumes of books displayed with their spines towards you to know their identity. Along the walls were some of your racing memorabilia posters from your times of old, from your old room. With a few pictures of shelves, with a few pictures on shelves of you and your family. Some of the whole family, whilst most were only of you and your mother. To the far right of the room was a small window that sat in front of a small desk that had a few bits and pieces laid out over it. Some were old parts from your scooter that were placed to the left side, and the rest were new parts to replace the taken out old parts that were placed on the right side. On the centre of the table was the scooter itself. The body detached from the handlebars, ready to be fixed up. Leaning on the centre desk was the handlebars. In desperate need of repair, but you couldn't bring yourself to change them around because of what they remind you of and how dear they were to you. Moving beside your bookcase, you pulled out a book from the middle that was dark blue grey in colour and read Griffin Kingdom History on the front in bold gold letters. Positioning yourself so that you were sitting on the, your bed, you placed the book down on your lap and patted the covers with your hoof and motioned to Scoot Loose to take a seat beside you. Hesitantly, Scoot Loose came towards the bed and slowly climbed her way on top of her. and all of a sudden, <coughs> God's sake, I can't even talk. Her nervousness was gone as she found great comfort in the plushy covers. Taking a nearby pencil, you hoofed it over to her before taking that one out yourself along with a couple of pieces of the paper. Without wasting time, you opened the book around its midpoint and began reading from there whilst putting out key facts to scoot along the way to help her out and to show her that it was not as hard as she thought it was. And in fact, it was pretty easy. The two of you stood it for quite some time for once. Scootaloo was finding herself to be enjoying what she was learning. She particularly liked the old fighting style techniques and strategies of the, that Griffin's used in olden times, and learning about the older and newer model armour. However, 
As the time rolled into the later hours of the upcoming night, <clears throat> you took a momentary glance at your bedside clock and your eyes shrank a little upon seeing what time it was. It was nearing half seven. You were both so caught up in your studying that you forgot about checking the time every so often. Scootaloo seems to take notice too, as she also began to have a short panic attack. She didn't even tell her parents where she was going after school, or even what time she would be home. By now, they were probably getting worried. Shocked, she dropped her pencil on paper and jumped from the bed, her panic growing deeper. Climbing off the bed yourself, you held her shoulders and tried to get her attention so she wouldn't freak out. It seemed to wet when her trembling figure started to die down a little bit, and she looked into your eyes. Calm down, school though. I'm sure there ain't anything to worry about, you said in a confident tone, and it seemed to work when you could feel her physically relax and draw out a deep sigh to get her rapid breathing under control. Now, come on. If you're that worried, how about if I walk you home? How's that sound? She blushed again and nodded. Trotting your way out of your room after Scoot Lou and closing the door, you grabbed your blue one bolt scarf with a light with the lightning bolt on the ends of it and offered it to Scoot Lou, who hesitantly took it off you with a grateful smile and wrapped it around her own neck. Leaving your house, you followed Scoot Lou by walking next to her as you escorted her home. Outside of the night was growing darker in a blanket of blackness that followed by glittery white dots in the sky that set a romantic scene along with the brilliant white light from the moon that hung in the skies above. All through the time the two of you were walking together, you would take a momentary glance towards the skies, admiring the beauty of the scenery around you. Looking away from the sky, you both momentarily looked into each other's eyes before immediately breaking contact as fierce blushes ravaged from your cheeks. When you finally arrived at Scootaloo's house, you saw that it was pretty much the same as your own house, design-wise. The only difference was that the colour of the structure was a light blue and a grey colour that looked rather plain. Walking her to her front door, Scootaloo stopped before she could turn the handle to the door and looked at you in the eyes with a soft look. She unwrapped the scarf you gave her for the walk back and held out to you. For a moment, you stared at it before looking back into her eyes for a smile and you pushed it gently to her chest with a hoof. You keep it. You said softly before she unexpectedly pulled you into a hug. While she had been held in her embrace, you could smell what you knew was the scent of treasure hoof shampoo. <laughs> Thanks, Blaze. For everything. You're a great friend. She said before she broke away with a blush on her cheeks, like you did. She said her goodbyes before she entered her house and left you standing there with a perplexed expression as the last words that left her mouth lingered in your mind. Friend. Since the first day you met Scoot Lou, it was no lie that you found yourself to take a liking to her for all the moments you got to hang on with her. From the school to your house, you found that you had some things in common. But already, for her to deem you as a friend? That wasn't expected. You let a smile creep onto your lips as you turned around and began your walk home the words still hanging around in your head.